I will often be asked um, if I'm on, if I'm being interviewed or something like that, people will often say to me, oh, you, you were the executive producer of this, this show where you, people talk about their sex lives and that's so taboo and you're so open about your sex life. You talk about it all the time. And um, how, how did you come to be that way? And I had to think about it for a long time before I came up with my standard answer because I was like, I don't know, I just am this way. What do you mean? Um, but I had to think about it. And I grew up in Germany. Uh, well, not grew up entirely, but I was there for four years in my formative years. So my dad was forced. And this always came to mind that Sesame Street would be playing in German uh, on the TV, but the opening credits were different than the American ones in that there would be naked children running around a fountain and nudity was just like presented to children as integrated nudity. And then eventually, of course, that leads into sexuality. It doesn't have to, but it often does. Or um, being, being at public swimming pools and nudity is the standard. And then it was like uh, bathing suits were optional was the minority. Um, and then just in general, kind of being in Europe that sex ain't no thing. Um, totally what you're saying, Alex, and like integrated into our lives. And I think for me, having grown up that way or being there in, in those informative years just sort of informed my constitution in a way that isn't true for everybody. And I would say, especially in America. Is that kind of what you're saying is that it's like, it's the integration part of it, as opposed to that you said that privilege, like I'm hiding this part of, of who we are. And why do we do that anyway? <laughs> you don't have thoughts on that? Like, where did that come from? The hiding of it, the secrecy of sexuality? Well, I mean, culturally in the United States, uh, we treat sexuality as this default, right? Everybody's heterosexual, everybody's white, everybody's got the same, uh, status and the, the ability to have time and relationships. Um, and so anything outside of that is considered taboo for public conversation. And it's just, I mean, personally, I find it kind of asinine, but you know, it, it's a cultural issue. Uh, we treat sex very strangely in America as though anything that, um, any of our identities that, that link to our sexuality are are shamed and things that we are supposed to be hiding, at least um, a large percentage of the public believes that to be the case, um, especially when you diverge from that um, that uh, concept of default human being, the white, straight, cisgendered male. So, mm -hmm. And I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, when you, when you, take the time to to investigate your own identities and how those affect how you show up in the world it's a lot i mean and it takes time and it evolves over your lifetime and if you pretend like pieces of you don't exist it's very hard to get through if i could uh interject some this reminds me of something i heard the other day on a podcast um and if anybody can speak to this um this idea of what was I hearing? Basically, sex educators. Um, some people are advocating sex education start as early as preschool or kindergarten. And of course, there's people who are, you know, uh, throwing up uh, in, in arms. I don't know the term, um, <laughs> but, but are railing against that idea because they're like, no, 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 you can't teach a kindergartner how to fuck, um, <laughs> which, which, is a, which is almost an intentional misunderstanding of right. what sexual education might be in kindergarten. And this person was saying that, no, the idea would be that maybe you just teach about asking somebody before you touch them. Like even if, you know, may I, may I move you out of the way or may I direct you here? Or a doctor might say, may I touch you? Instead of just mm -hmm. going in like, yes, I am touching you with no consent. Mm -hmm. And just instill the idea of consent. Um, and I'm wondering how that would inform the idea of sexual citizenship sort of awaken it in people that that this is a thing to be considered. I think, um, Allison, you used the word intersectionality, and I think when I was looking up sexual citizenship, there's a lot of academic papers, and I think intersectionality is another word that comes down from academia that mm -hmm. feels uh, feels like a barrier for the lay people like me to be like, oh, I don't even think I even understand that. Is just is that just what the eggheads are talking about these <laughs> days? Um, how do you? Allison, you you speak on this sort of stuff a lot, and you're so articulate about it. How do you 
how do you transverse trans, transverse that barrier of academia into just normal conversation? Well, I think the I mean I think that it's a, it's a challenge for sure. I think that you know using large words is problematic sometimes because it pro problematic is another one of those words. Um, because yeah, I, I I certainly don't ever want people to feel like they don't know enough to be able to have candid conversations about sexuality, right? Like we are all we all have the right to be experts in our own sexuality, and I think that that's something that a lot of us feel alienated from as well. This idea that there is there are experts and then there are the rest of us. Um, but I think that you know speaking to the idea of like age appropriate sex education, like. Another big part of it is that in our culture, and I'm speaking kind of broadly about what our culture even is, there are microcultures in America, I'm not going to say that there aren't, but like dominant American culture likes to act as though children aren't sexual. Human beings are sexual in the fetus, like in, in the womb onward, in different ways. We develop on our own and we develop sexuality at a specific our, our pace, if we're so lucky as to develop it at our own pace. So fetuses self pleasure infants self pleasure there is that like children understand pleasure and they understand love and i think that there is plenty to talk about when we think about sex education we have this notion that sex is like we're ta teaching like the the like the the nitty gritty details right but it's like sex education absolutely includes consent and boundaries and knowing i don't like it when grandma kisses me so why do i have to let grandma kiss me and having those conversations with mom and dad about like like what if i what if i could do something else with that still shows her that i love her right but this is not a conversation most parents are having with their children about sexual like about body sovereignty right mm -hmm. and so a lot of us kind of we we hit this like and uh, not arbitrary barrier at like 18 years old <laughs> suddenly we're supposed to know everything about our bodies when we've been denied all of that information from birth to adulthood and so i think that when we talk about like comprehensive sexual education when we talk about sexual citizen it's talking about acknowledging the human being as an organism within this complex world and that sexuality isn't just about the nitty gritty of genitals. It's also about communication and it's about love and it's about God and it's about all of our relationships with how we move through the world. And that the more we can have those conversations, the better. And that's kind of another buzzword, sex positivity, right? There, there's so many different definitions about sex positivity and you're gonna get a different definition from anybody you ask. But in my mind, it's, it's be acknowledging that the more we talk about it, the more we integrate that stuff into our lives, the better society is, the better we show up as parents, children, family, friends lovers, and that we need to be able to continually engage in the conversation.